morning. I see we have a little snow out there and it's gotten a little chilly, about 22 degrees here. Got the wood burner running. I wanted to talk about these cheap Chinese battery holders, uh, the boards with the uh, BMS battery management system, little boards attached to them. And as usual, I went down the rabbit hole. My wife says the basement looks like a mad scientist lives down here. But this all started when I was reading about the Ryobi power packs. I do have a Ryobi trimmer. And I got curious, of course. I uh, purchased a damaged one cheap that wasn't working. One of these guys, the old Ryobi. And it's just as like anything else, you go down a rabbit hole because you want to figure out how things are working. In this case, this was a little bit used. Um, the batteries in there were originally these batteries were about 2800 milliamp, I do believe, or the LG BHE. 21865s. Uh, they do have a surge capability of 20 amps. But uh, so the problem with that battery pack was the PC controller board in there. There was something amiss because I played around with it a lot and charged the batteries at each point manually, brought them up where everything was balanced a couple times but the board wouldn't stay in balance so there were just some defective parts on there so I got one of these little uh, battery testers and actually I tested every single one of these batteries it puts a 500 milliamp load on a full battery it tells you how many milliamp hour they're rated for and most of those old batteries came out about uh, let's see I have it marked here oh uh, they like 21 2200 milliamp hour but they wouldn't perform in a discharge test because they're old and they've been used even though at 500 milliamps when you crank them up to run an amp uh, they the runtime just wasn't there but for the low current applications, they're still good batteries. But anyway, I want to talk about these boards. And I figured I bought some of these to play around with with the batteries. Some of these uh, Chinese boards with the battery holders in them and actually the BMS built in on the back there. And I had some questions about these as it sits a single board I don't think it'd be a problem but you can stack these guys and that's the whole idea and stacking them the way these battery management boards work If you look on the back of it, well, if you take the one where the BMS is, you, you can see where the uh, you have the connections, 12.6, 8.4, 0 volts, and 4.2, and the minus. How these work is they switch the negative of the battery on or off if there's an issue. But if you look on the back of the board, at the circuit trace, there's no way these things are rated at. Look how small they are. I mean, they're they're rated supposedly. This is a 3s 40 amp. There's no way this the uh, circuit traces on the back of these are going to carry that. Especially if you have stacked. I'm going to stack five of them, and. Actually, these are uh, 
21700 battery holders. And I figured I have, let me pop over here a second. If I wanted to use the uh, 18650s, I bought a bag of these little uh, adapters. They go right over the battery and make it fit in that 2160 holder. There uh, looks like brass on the back side, but rather than doing that, because these batteries were a little iffy, I bought a box of uh, these Hilo. Hilo, Hilo, H E L I O 20. They're rated at 2200 uh, milliamp hour, hour. And these are nice little batteries. These guys, they have built in battery management on them, the little boards in them. And so for short circuit, over discharge, and uh, such, they're a little more safer than those ones from the Ryobi drill pack because there were no battery protection on the battery itself. But the nice thing about these is they fit perfectly nice in these 21700 holders here. But they won't fit in your standard 18650 holders because they're too long. But they fit perfect in these guys. So I thought this would be a nice experiment with and of course going down the rabbit hole I ended up I says well I gotta make something. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up a battery box just for fun. Actually, I'm going to stick it inside this uh, Harbor Freight ammo box. I got the top off and put everything in. I'm going to build a panel over the top. So when you take the lid off, you can access the panel with any controls and extra output. And I thought I might put a, a couple hundred watt inverter on in there, but uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet. Before I'm done, because I, I have this guy here. This is a this is a uh, power sign. This is old vintage guy. This thing's heavy, man. It's got a uh, big old turtle transformer in it. It's a pure sign, uh, but of course it won't fit on there. Though I could mount it on the side, but it's heavy. Nice heavy aluminum case, but certainly won't fit inside that box. I do have a smaller 150 watt. But it's a uh, one of those modified uh, sign, which is basically just a square wave. And those are okay, but some electronic equipment doesn't like it. I'm going to stack five of these boards. So I think that'll be a nice project, and I'll go over that at some point when I'm done. But uh, let's look at this battery management uh, little module. So there's... A couple choices here, what you can do on these boards. Uh, as far as as far as using one of these and stacking five of these, uh, these batteries are 2200 milliamps, so say they're in parallel series, these are 3S, so you've you got capability here with these on average four amp per board plus I you know uh, a short duration these batteries will do um, actually three amps each so that's six amps and I did have did a test and I had six amps running through one of these boards without any issue but I can't imagine pulling 40 amps and they also sell if you want an 80 amp version which actually has two of these BMS boards in parallel I'm not sure that's such a good idea because now you have a cape. If one uh, shuts off, will the other one shut off it in a, you know, in an emergency situation if you have some overloads or, but so I don't think that's a good idea either. But uh, what I, the other, other choice you have is buy a better BMS. And since when you're stacking these, all the connections go through, through, uh, brass uh, pieces that when you stack and thread them together, these uh, 
Oh, they see. So they, they, they come with them in there. And you can also, there's a jumper to connect each board to each board for the uh, balancing. But uh, so if you put one external, a better BMS, that's a solution. But my solution, since the negative is what provides the control on these boards, comes off the back of the board on the, you see there on the negative there. Um, I am going to, uh, you know, I'm going to use a relay. That way, and I'm going to try a solid state, state relay. See if I can, uh, similar to this, this is, this is an AC relay, but I did order a little DC relay. Um, they can take some current. So I'll have the board turn the relay on and off. I'll just use that connection instead of uh, feeding all the boards to this one circuit trace for the current because it's what it would have to do. And also the question is, I mean, this little guy, I can't imagine this little guy handling 40 amps, you know, with uh, the size of those circuit traces anyway, but maybe a quick search for a few seconds, but uh, let's go over this uh, little batter management board. What I'll probably do is leave one attached to the back of the board. And like I said, I'm going to disconnect this negative and run it through the relay. And it should do a fair job. These boards are pretty nice. Uh, but again, I don't think they can handle the current. And they have uh, charge balance control on them. Overcharge. Uh, they also have uh, battery protection IC on them that uh, does overcharge and discharge detect voltage and uh, short circuit. So if you look at the schematic here, I drew this up. Some of the schematics on the internet were a little bit iffy and I don't think they were drawn right, but I just did my own. So you have a charge balance IC, this uh, HY2213DB3A. And this guy has overcharge detect voltage of uh, 4.2 to plus or minus uh, 0.025 volts. And overcharge release voltage at 4.19 plus or minus 0.035 volt. So if you have an overcharge situation in one of the banks, because I'll be running uh, two batteries, well, actually, it's going to end up being 10, 10 of these batteries in parallel, and uh, parallel series with three of those banks in series. That's how these uh, boards are wind up, wound up, you have, or made up, you have, Two parallel, two parallel, two parallel, but these parallel units are in series. So you have, it makes up your uh, 12.6 when it's charged. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, the uh, charge balance ICs control the uh, charge balance, what's on here. And you have the battery protection IC chip on here that will shut off these MOSFETs. Now there are two banks of MOSFET, MOSFETs, two banks of five each, and they're in series, parallel. So you have five parallel, five parallel, but those two banks are in series. So overcharge detection voltage on this battery protection IC you see it as 4.3. And the over and uh, what will happen is if you have an overcharge, it will shut one of the banks of MOSFETs off, shutting the battery off from the charger. 
you have the uh, in the release voltage is 4.1 where it will turn back on and you have over discharge detect voltage where if it gets down around two and a half 2.5 volts it will shut off one of the banks so your load will shut off and the release voltage is 2.9 if it rises it'll it'll turn back on and this also has a short circuit detect voltage if you have a short and your voltage drops to like the 1.36 abruptly it's going to shut off the bank of five of those MOSFETs so it's it's pretty simple but it seems to work okay because I ran it through its paces um, I got this uh, charge board I it's a nice little board and you can set take the input from a power supply and you can set the voltage for uh, the uh, high voltage which uh, had it set for about uh, 12.7 and then the release voltage again whatever you wanted to drop to you know say say you wanted to drop to 3.9 before it starts charging again and it, and it would start charging again so you could leave this on indefinitely it's got a little relay on it and I'm going to use a 5 amp charger for this these set of batteries but uh, again take a, taking a uh, look at this schematic You can see how they laid everything out, the uh, and, and they're using 43 ohm resistors for the balance, so that's about 100 milliamp balancing current total. So, be running uh, 10 in batteries in parallel, uh, 10 milliamp will balance out, you know, in the long run, fine. And uh, the uh, <coughs> the uh, MOSFETs uh, Q. Q13 through 22, they're AOD 452, and we have uh, several transistors on here in the control circuit. We have some uh, G1, which is marked on their transistors. They're MMBT5551, and also we have some Mark 2L on the board which are the MMB T5401 so you can look at the picture of the board on the schematic I'll leave all this in the description these uh, and I'll also leave the data sheets for some of these these transistors and ICs that are on this board in case you're interested in looking at it but uh, so that's about it just Dove down the rabbit hole and ended up building something again. So when this is all done, I'll run another video of how it ended up. I have some ideas to add to this. Uh, some ports for USB charging. Uh, maybe uh, maybe an extra charge port to be able to charge from a solar panel. Um, you know, just, just another toy to play with, I guess. But... Uh, so other than that, if you have any questions or comments, uh, give a yell and have a good day.